Our guest entering his third season as the head coach of the Los Angeles Chargers, one of my favorite people to talk to in the NFL. Brandon Staley's with us. Brandon, thanks a lot for coming on, man. I know it's a uh, a busy week with minicamp. How are we doing over there? I'm doing great, Tom. Thanks for having me. So you're in minicamp this week. Training camp's, you know, six weeks away here. You've had, a, I would say, an eventful off season. Give me the, the state of the Chargers entering, entering year three for you. Yeah, I think this group is really hungry, really focused. I, Tom has you know, been really, really pleased with the professionalism and I think the overall culture of the team. I think we've done a lot of work over the last you know, three years of onboarding the right people. And I just think you see a, a really high level group out there that's doing all the right things. And uh, that's exciting. And we've just handled our business this off season. And, you know, the real work's going to begin in training camp here uh, in July. I know you were really happy with the way that the draft came together for you guys. Take me through, I mean, first of all, your, your first round pick, but just as the draft board fell, just kind of take me through how that all unfolded for you guys. Yeah, Tom, we were in a, a position that, you know, we want to be in, which is, you know, drafting towards the end of the first round. And we thought that there were a lot of good options for us, whether it was staying put, moving back. Uh, I think we had a group of players that were really comfortable with drafting, but we certainly got the one that we were after uh, and Quentin Johnson, you know, and, and Q's had a really good spring for us. And, you know, just really gives us a dimension that we were looking for within our offense. Uh, we have a very... I think explosive offense and a complete offense, but I just think he gives us a dimension that I think brings out the best in some of the other players that we have. Uh, He's outstanding run after catch player. Um, He's a guy that played really, really well outside the red line. And what that does is I think it makes, you know, covering Mike Williams and Keenan Allen and Josh Palmer and Gerald Everett, Austin Eckler, it's going to make, it's going to open things up for them and create more space and, um, you know, just give Justin more options. And so uh, I think to get a young receiver like that, Tom, and especially him not having to do everything right away where he comes into a room where he can just really develop and grow and be himself and learn from, you know, two veteran players who I think are as good as anybody in the NFL. And then Josh Palmer, who had, you know, Tom, he had over 70 catches for us last year. So just think we've got a deep group and um, he's been awesome to work with so far in the spring. And then, you know, just in terms of the other draft picks, you know, Tom, just there's a lot of proven production from these players and I love the makeup of these guys Um, they really fit the culture that we have here Um, they've handled their business they fit in well with the veterans and uh, I'm excited to see them during training camp you've got a basketball team in that receiver room I mean you've got just some big skill weapons is there a an analytic aspect to having big men at that position just in terms of the way that the matchups unfold and then how defenses have to play you yeah, you know, Tom, I think you got to start with this. Is It's a pace and space league. Um, we really believe in that. And, um, you know, it's become a three-receiver league. And so no matter who those receivers are, whether they're tight ends or wide outs or even running backs, it's become that type of league. And, um, you know, it's to me, the NFL has always been a big man's game. Um, and, and, and I think that you're seeing it in basketball, Tom, where everyone's looking for that, you know, 6'7 to 6'10", you know, player that can do everything, that can dribble, pass, and shoot, that can guard every position, you know, and that's how basketball is. You know, I've spent, you know, a couple of days with Steve Kerr and his staff at Golden State, and, you know, that's how the NBA is, and, and you can see it all over that league, and that's really w- what we're looking for on offense is to have a bunch of guys with size, speed, skill set uh, that you can take advantage of and, and that can truly force the, def- the defense to cover everybody, and that's what you want to be on offense is you want everybody – on the field to have a chance to touch the ball and to be a threat on the defense. And um, I know that's been important to Tom Telesco, Jojo Wooden, um, our personnel staff, our coaching staff, and and certainly where Kellen came from in Dallas, um, you know, that's a lot how they were structured. So, um, you know, if you look at the premium offenses in the NFL, that's, you know, that's, you know, sort of the formula. So um, we're excited to get that group on the field together. When you spend time with Steve Kerr, are you looking for, cultural things are you looking for competitive things what did, what did you take away from that experience oh tom it was just a it was an incredible two days i, I went there in the their playoff series against the kings um i was there for game three and just spent two days with his staff he was gracious enough he and bob myers were gracious enough you know to give me a ton of access and it was it was just a uh, one of my favorite things that i've ever done you know from a professional development standpoint and steve has just got so much knowledge and experiences as a player as a coach 
uh, there was so much to draw from, and, and it was, you know, it was tactical stuff. It was culture stuff. It was, you know, just all the things, uh, little things, big things, and, you know, what a one of the best coaches in, in all of sports, and he was gracious enough to, to spend a bunch of time with me. And his staff was amazing, too, Kenny Atkinson. Um, those guys, they were they were fantastic. Mike Dunleavy, uh, you know, some of the personnel guys, they were they were just they were awesome to me. Have you done things like that before in terms of, you know, you got the U.S. Open down the street from you. Have you done cross sports things and tried to, to find things from other games? Yeah, I love that aspect of coaching. Uh, I draw a lot from that. And so, uh, you know, basketball, um, you know, I'm a huge tennis guy. Um, so I've tried to, you know, I was able to spend some time with Rafa Nadal's coaches last year. You know, went to Indian Wells, went to Wimbledon and uh, one of my good friends, um, you know, here in Orange County uh, is a professional tennis coach. And you're, you're always looking for that. You know, one of my good friends is the general manager for the Cleveland Cavs. We kind of grew up playing AAU basketball together. And you're always looking for other ways to improve. And, um, you know, that's been a big aspect of me trying to, to be as good as I can be. Brandon Staley is our guest, head coach of the L.A. Chargers. Uh, you mentioned Kellen Moore, new offensive coordinator. That was a, a pretty substantial move um, in the course of your offseason because you guys had had success Offensively, obviously, Kellen has also had a lot of success in Dallas. Without giving away all your your schematic secrets here, Brandon, uh, you know, on June fourteenth, what what is this offense going to look like, and how do you hope Kellen, from what you've seen so far, is really going to help your your young quarterback? Yeah, well, number one, I think Tom, it's been fantastic to team up with Kellen from a culture standpoint, from a leadership standpoint. He's just Anyone that knows Kellen, you know, son of a coach, a great high school coach who was his father, um, played at Boise State for Chris Peterson and uh, played in the NFL for some great coaches, Jim Caldwell, Jason Garrett, and has been around a lot of ball. And then as a coordinator, uh, you know, me having to defend this guy, uh, I just know how special he is. And to be able to team up every day with him as a, as a coach before you get to the actual X's and O's, um, that's been a highlight for me. He's been great for our staff. Him and Doug Nussmeyer on offensive have, have been really fantastic for our staff. And, you know, he's just the type of guy that, you know, um, can go into a game plan and you know that he's going to bring out the best in your players. And I love the way that he makes the game simple for our players. Um, I love how he's thinking about our players first, you know, and, and thinking about them and then, you know, creating a scheme for them. Um, both in the run game and in the pass game, and then how that fits within the football team. But, um, you know, his production speaks for itself as a play caller. I don't need to, to speak on that. I mean, you can see the, the productions in Dallas with Dak and that group of skill players and that offensive line. Um, you know, it's, it's just been great to team up with them. And I know that during training camp we're, we're going to be able to uh, figure out how to best use our guys. I know you've been asked 600 times over the past couple of months about a Justin Herbert extension. I'm going to make it 601 here, Brandon. Are we getting closer? Do we have optimism? Could this be done before camp? Where, where do we stand with Justin right now? I would say yes on all three of those uh, points you just made. Um, I, I, the, the talks are ongoing. That's the, the, the word that I've used, ongoing. Um, and we are confident and optimistic. There's been, you know, a lot of debate, I think, at least externally in the media and among fans about, you know, how difficult it is to win, once you have a quarterback get paid, it takes up you know twenty percent of your salary cap or whatever the number might be. Are you a believer that you can win and win big, paying a quarterback top dollar? Yeah, I do, uh, because I think that it's a lot about structure of of how you're going to structure the contracts too, and then um, I think that if you have an organization that has healthy a uh, healthy cap and you know, a good number, you know, the right amount of premium players. And as long as you don't have to sacrifice your draft capital, I think that's where people um, go wrong is they're in an unhealthy cap situation to begin with, or they don't have the, the amount of draft capital, because obviously if you're paying someone that much money, you've got to continue to replenish it um, through the draft because that's the, the, that's where you can save the, the cost. And so, um, and at the same time, you know that you need the premium players in order to win. So um, I think the, if you look at our football team, I know that, that we have that we have our draft capital and store you know intact for the future um now and in the future and we have the right amount of premium players on both sides of the ball and so um we've tried to really plan for this 
you know, since I became the head coach in terms of, you know, where we are with the offensive line, you know, skill position players and um, surround them with a defense and kicking game, um, you know, they can make us a complete team. And, you know, obviously things are going to change when this contract happens, but what's not going to change is that Justin um, is going to be leading our football team and playing like how he always does. And, you know, and that we have a team around him that, um, you know, is really special. So I'm looking forward to uh, the season, you know, getting to work in training camp. Obviously, Austin Eckler was a big topic through the offseason, too. You were able to, to come to an accord. How, how does he seem? He's a pretty intellectual guy. It seems like he yeah. understands the business of it. Is he, in terms of his mindset, his focus, is he where you want him to be right now? Yeah, Tom, he came in here yesterday, and he just lit it up like he always does. Uh, and I think, as you know, and you, you probably had some insight into this um, that that others didn't. It's just we, we love this guy, you know, and we totally understand the business side of this, and you're seeing other running backs go through the same thing. And um, we know how good of a player this guy is. And, you know, since I became the head coach, he's got 38 touchdowns. You know, and this guy's become one of the top players, you know, at his position in the league. And so I think we were able to come to a, a really, you know, I think fair agreement. And I think the respect was high the whole way. And he came into practice yesterday and he plays like he always does. You know, he's, he's no one's in better shape. No one cares more. No one's a better professional than, than Austin. And uh, we're certainly a lot of better, better team with him. I think one of the undersold things about last season for you guys, Brandon, was, yeah, you won 10 games and you got into the playoffs, but you did it with a remarkable number in a bad way of, of injuries. I mean, you played without your left tackle. You didn't have your pass rusher. You spent a lot of money on a corner who didn't really play at all. Your receivers were kind of in and out of the lineup through the course of the season. You had to overcome a lot. When you look at this roster, you know, beyond your draft, beyond signing Eric Kendricks, I have to imagine you feel like you've got a couple of extra free agent additions just with hopefully Roshan and, and JC coming back and being fully healthy. I, I do feel that way, Tom. Uh, we, we feel really strongly about our team, and that's why we've done what we've done. You know, I thought last year we were aggressive in free agency. Um, you know, we traded for Khalil, um, and we made those moves because we believed that that team was going to get to play together, you know, and grow together, and that's what we're doing. And, you know, we know the level of our team that's out there. You know, when I was out there yesterday at minicamp, we, we know the level of player and the level of uh, team that we have. And now, you know, I just think you're going to get to see it uh, play together and and grow together and that's something that's hard nowadays is to get a team that can really grow together I think you saw it with the Nuggets you know winning the, the NBA championship you know that was a build from 2018 2019 to now and and we know that if this group gets to play together uh, over the course of a few years that it's going to be where we know it can be and um, you know I'm really looking forward to this group to getting out there in training camp competing together and, and, and making each other better and and really building us for 2023. So when you look at the division, you've got, you know, maybe the greatest player who's ever lived, and he's still only 27, Patrick Mahomes. You're always going to have to get past him. you got Sean Payton coming in now to Denver. Obviously, the Raiders are still building that thing there uh, with Josh, and they got a new quarterback in Jimmy. But, I mean, it comes down to the Chiefs, Brandon. When we're talking about the AFC West, we're going to be constantly saying, how does somebody – knock off the Chiefs? How does somebody knock off the multi-time MVP, the multi-time Super Bowl winner? What's the path? How do, how do you how do you process that from a coaching standpoint, but also just from a messaging standpoint with your team? And how do you ultimately, you know, take down the team that everybody's looking at as a dynasty? You got to focus on your team. Number one, you got to focus on your team and being a complete football team, because when you're playing against someone like Pat and, you know, Kelsey and, you know, obviously Andy does a great job coaching. Uh, you got to do it as a team. You know, it's not going to be one person that's doing it for sure. Uh, you got to do it as a team. Uh, and you also know that we have what it takes as a team. You know, we faced this team now four times since, you know, I've been here. And, you know, you can see how we've performed in those four games. And you just know the level that we've played at. All four of our games have been fantastic. And, you know, we've got full respect for them. And, you know, we, have, we play them two times, you know, for sure, and probably more, you know, in the playoffs. And, you know, it's, um, you know, that's that's what you're – you're hoping for as a competitor is to go head to head with the best. And I know that that's how our guys are wired and how our organization is wired. And, um, you know, they've got a fantastic team and they've, they've proven to be the top team in the NFL over the last, you know, five to seven years. And, um, you know, we're, we're excited to, to go head to head with those guys. Um, you know, and there's a lot of time between now and then, cause you know, that, you know, obviously they're the team to beat. They've proven that, but you know, there's six, you know, there's uh, 15 other games on the schedule that you got to win too and prepare for. So, um, 
but full respect for, for those guys. And, and I, I think our rivalry has been great for, for the NFL because whenever we've played them, it, it's been a fantastic game. And certainly with Pat and Justin going head-to-head um, with as many marquee players that are on both sides, uh, it's, been, it's been awesome for the league. So what are you going to do with yourself these next six weeks, Brandon? Do you, do you get away? Do you, do you wake up in the middle of the night thinking of new schemes? Like, what do you, what do, you do with yourself for the, until, from now until training camp? <laughs> All of it. You know, just spend a bunch of time with family, you know, work out like crazy, read, you know, tape, plan, prepare, you know, repeat, you know, and, but make sure that we're making a lot of memories as a family and uh, you're never too far away from, from this job and, and that's what makes it so special. Uh, there's a lot to do, uh, and that's what makes it so fulfilling. Uh, but I'm really excited about this football team. Uh, you know, really looking forward to this last day of minicamp and, you know, a great summer ahead. And uh, like you said, we're, you know, we're going to spend this five weeks getting better and, and making a bunch of memories as a family. You're the best, Brandon. Thanks a lot for coming on, man. Tom, thanks for having me, man. Have a great summer. Yeah, you too. It's Brandon Staley, head coach of the Los Angeles Chargers. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.